Good afternoon, Prinda. Welcome to Cardiff and Vale News Desk. Today we are talking about the policy of safeguarding. This is a very important policy and it's actually the responsibility of everybody within the college. This is about safeguarding the physical and emotional well-being of all of our students and staff and we need to be aware that this isn't just a policy that stays within the constraints of the the college setting but actually affects our students when they're out there in the wider community as well. Some people may not also realise that part of this policy now covers the areas of radicalisation which in the last few years have become a growing concern for for younger students as well. So I am going to be asking my colleague down in Dumbles Road if uh, they would like to talk to us about the legal framework that's actually the, the scaffolding that has been uh, responsible for producing our policy within the college. Uh, and then we'll look at a little bit um, of the, the sort of impact that this policy has on the everyday workings and where our colleagues and indeed our students can access help if they feel they or somebody that they know is at risk. Thank you very much. I'll now hand over to my colleague down in Dumbles Road. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, from Karen back there in the studio. And we're down, as you can see, outside the city centre campus down on Dumbles Road. Beautiful new building, it's been here a few years now. Um, we're going to talk, as Karen said, about the, the safeguarding policy that we have in place, a hugely important policy, as, as she said. This is actually a piece of legislation that's been drafted by the college that isn't based on any one act, but actually on 14 different pieces of uh, legislation and acts um, from not only the Welsh Government, but education workforce, um, and also from uh, the, uh, the government in Westminster as well, the Counterterrorism Act. The acts, um, I have a, a slide here to show you. I'll just put that up on the screen now. So as you can see, the legal framework for the safeguarding policy uh, covers these 14 different strategies, acts, pieces of legislation that have been brought in, not obviously just within uh, in Wales, but obviously in, in the wider uh, United Kingdom as well. We have the Counter-Terrorism Act, um, which obviously with the prevent strategy as well is there to try and protect against the radicalization of our students. Um, and obviously we've got the prevent duty guidance for further education. We have the Protection of Freedom Act, and that's important as well that we remember that all of this sits within the protection of our freedom um, and this also, in a way, although it's not mentioned here, leads into the Mental Capacity Act and that people are allowed to make bad decisions um, if they have capacity. So obviously we need to make sure that those freedoms are protected. There's the All Wales Child Protection Procedures for those of our students that fall into that category and keeping learners safe circular as well. Safeguarding children, working together under the Children's Act circular, and then obviously there's the complaints procedure for the school governing bodies um, in Wales, which was put together in 2012. The Safeguarding of Vulnerable Groups Act. Um, and obviously this we talk about adults, um, children at risk. And this comes directly from the protection of vulnerable adults and the protection of vulnerable children that we saw prior to the, the introduction of the Social Services and Wellbeing Act in 2014 when uh, part seven actually talked about safeguarding and talked about people being at risk rather than vulnerable people. So we're looking at respecting others and anti-bullying guidance. And I think this tends to be something that for a long time was ignored uh, and bullying was seen as just something that, that happened and you, know, you toughened up and you put up with the bullies because you know that's what happened because they are, there are just bullies, but actually, we do need to, to show children that this is not acceptable and adults as well, because we've seen it um, not just within the, uh, the, the sort of the, the community of children and young adults, but we can also see this in the way that we act towards our students. Um, we don't want to bully or undermine them. This is about keeping them emotionally safe and physically safe and, and that developing our modelling so that it actually 
relates to how they need to relate to other people as well is, is hugely important. So we said about the um, safeguarding children in education and handling allegations of abuse against teachers and other staff. And again, this is this is important. We need to ensure that when we're talking and um, we're aware of a, a, some abuse or neglect, that we take notes accurately. This isn't about our own opinion. This is about actually writing down what has happened, not about allowing ourselves to decide that we know what's happened and that's what we're going to put down on the piece of paper. We need to ensure that it's actually a record of what the person has said and not our interpretation of what's being said to us. Like I said earlier, the Social Services and Wellbeing Act, um, Wales 2014, this came in and part seven of this relates directly to the Safeguarding Act. And for a lot of our health and social care students, this takes up a lot of what they're taught. This is about recognising um, the, the different categories of abuse, whether that's sexual, physical, emotional, financial, um, recognising that neglect can be neglect of a parent, say, who may be sending a child to school without breakfast in the morning, or a, a parent who is, is managing to buy cigarettes but can't buy paracetamol for, for a child um, to, to sort of self-neglect maybe of an older student whether that's neglect of their mental health um, not taking medication or whether it's a case of um, they they could actually be an element of diminished mental capacity where they they're not aware that they're not looking after themselves so well and all of these things when we're teaching um, and when we're interacting with students or just observing students in college um, or even outside college is something that we need to be aware of one of the other very important pieces of legislation um, and the United Nations uh, Convention for Children's Rights and uh, Human Rights Acts um, led into was the Wellbeing of Future Generations Wills Act 2015. And it's important that we're aware that your children have the right to, to feel safe. And school is a place of safety, college is a place of safety. And we need to ensure that that's the same for our, our adult learners as well, that they feel that coming to college, they can feel free um, and protected and safe and that this is not a place where they'll be judged. And then obviously, as lecturers, we have our education workforce codes of conduct. And this, again, is something that is vitally important for us to, to be aware of. We have a duty of care to all of our students. And we also have a duty of care to the people that we're working with to, to see if they are in need of assistance as well. So as you can see that 14 pieces of legislation um, that have been brought into effect to produce the college framework for safeguarding, very complex and also very important. And sometimes we mustn't let our own prejudices stand in the way of recognising uh, when someone is at risk. Uh, sometimes we can feel very uncomfortable. Obviously, these are, you know, if it's allegations of sexual abuse, if it's grooming, these can feel quite uncomfortable for us to talk to openly and without prejudice to the person revealing uh, the information to us. So it's important that we also work on our skills um, and our, our nonverbal communication so that when someone does reveal that they may be abused, that we don't show shock. And what I'd like to do now is show a, a small video um, that highlights the, the fact that this is the responsibility of everybody. We obviously this is a Cardiff and Vale policy and it's, it's pertinent to us in school and colleges. But it's also for the wider population as well to be aware um, and to realise that it's everybody's responsibility. And that may feel uncomfortable. You may, you may feel that you don't have a right to comment on things. But actually, there will be times when maybe you need to step forward and it could help to, to protect somebody who is at risk. So here's a small video from North Wales. On... Safeguarding to me is extraordinarily wide. I don't think a lot of us think how wide safeguarding is. So to me, safeguarding, particularly now, is about getting away from this idea of what's happening just in the family home. It's about the whole of society. And it's thinking about all the different situations in which young people and vulnerable adults might be at risk. 
Put very, very simply, it's about protecting children from harm, spotting the signs that they are at risk and doing something about it straight away. Good practitioners are able to identify individual needs of children and make sure they're accommodated and safeguarding is a fundamental part of that. So the role of the adults and the other children in the setting is to create an environment and a space where each child can thrive, learn and develop in a happy and effective way. It's not just about protecting them from the immediate harm that they might be at risk of right now, but it's about taking a bigger view of their life and about putting things into place to prevent them from being at risk in the future. Safeguarding means um, whatever else you're doing in your day as a member of staff in a school, the most important thing is to ensure every child is safe and not just in school, but that you know they're safe outside of school as well. So safeguarding to me is a very proactive way of dealing with children uh, within organisations like schools. So putting into place uh, a lot of policies, procedures, etc., strategies to stop children being harmed, or if they are being harmed, to do one of two things, remove the child from that risk or that risk from that child. Safeguarding is really about the actions or preventative measures that in an education setting uh, schools are putting in place to protect the children and young people they're working with, ensure their well-being and the best possible outcomes for them. Whereas if we're talking about duty of care, that's more about the obligation, the moral obligation, the legal obligation for those working in schools to ensure the, the well-being and safety of the children and young people. Duty of care is all-encompassing. So duty of care is making sure that children know how to keep themselves safe, they, they look after themselves if they have illnesses etc, that they're treated well enough in the school, that everything is put in if they have an accident at school, that everything is done properly there. This fundamentally is the duty of care that we believe practitioners have to the children who come to their settings and to the families who send them there. For me it's not just my responsibility, it's the responsibility of everyone in the school. Child safeguarding is everybody's issue. Because it's everyone's responsibility to keep our children safe. Thank you to Karen down there in Dumbles Road. That did look pretty cold. I think that video summed up pretty much everything that we needed to know about safeguarding. It's everybody's responsibility. I'd like to thank you, Jochen Val, for your time this afternoon and hope that you all stay safe. Thank you. Goodbye.